When I was 17, I was diagnosed with a severe chronic illness called Crohn's disease. The doctors told me I'd never get off medication and be very lucky to avoid surgery. But at 23, I got sick and tired of feeling sick and tired all the time and decided to start taking my health seriously. Fast forward about a decade, I'm in the best health and shape of my life, completely off medication and in total remission. Here's the top 10 things I've learned in the last 10 years. Number one, it really is that simple. Our brains just love complexity. So we hate to believe that it's actually simple. For a long, long time, I bought into the belief that all these other health things like sleep, diet, exercise, meditation, laughing with friends, they work for other people. But you, Nate, you have a chronic illness and you don't understand your body is broken these things won't work you have to take drugs you have to do these surgeries you have to do all of this fancy stuff in order to get your body to work properly because your body is broken you're special your case is complex it's confusing it's just not that simple now Please hear me. I'm not suggesting that all you need to do is eat kale and exercise and your Crohn's disease is just going to vanish in a puff of smoke. That is not what I'm saying. But about six years in, I realized I was spending a ridiculous amount of energy looking for the secret sauce, the magic supplement, the perfect drug, the, the ideal thing, the complicated method to fix my problem. When... All I really needed to do was focus all that energy on stuff that's scientifically proven to help any human being function better. Would any human being who was sleeping for four hours a night feel better if they slept for eight or nine? Yeah. Would any human being who was sitting on the couch all day long feel better if they started exercising 30 minutes to an hour a day? Yes. Would any human being who only ate Taco Bell and McDonald's switch to a diet of lean meats, veggies, fruits, uh, whole grains feel better? Yes, of course. I'm not saying that it would cure me. I didn't believe that just one of those pieces would cure me or fix me. But when I started focusing on what I could control, which I definitely could control what went into my mouth, I could control how much I slept, I could control uh, if I exercised or not, my life totally changed. Because even if you got a 10% increase from how you feel now, or a 20% increase from how you feel now, let's say you change your sleeping habits and you have 10% more energy, and then you change your exercise habits and you have 20% more energy, and you feel a little bit more confident in your body, and you like the way you look in the mirror, and you have the confidence to approach that, that attractive girl or attractive guy at the, at the party or whatever you're doing. That's, that's big. That's a big thing. It, you don't have to make the jump all the way to 100. It's stacking these things on top of each other. And of course, if you have a chronic illness or a bunch of weight to lose or, or massive depression or something like that, obviously there is a little bit more complexity. Like I used acupuncture. I used some allergy elimination techniques. I used some other things. But those were the icing on the cake. The actual cake was the exercise and the sleeping and the meditation and these things that are not easy to do but are very, very simple. And we all know that we should be doing more of. So I would encourage you when you move towards this complexity mode, just try and snap yourself out of it. Snap yourself out of it. The simple stuff actually works. It does not need to be so complicated. Number two, everything drips on you. Literally everything. For instance, if you are sick with Crohn's disease and you're really into politics, but you're not a politician, like your income is not tied to politics, it really doesn't affect you in any way other than uh, you like to watch it and consume it. If you have a chronic illness, I would encourage you to just take a break from that. If you need to do some studying so you know who to vote for, yes, be educated by all means, place your vote and then just get off. Just get off for three or four months. The world is not going to stop spinning because you're not consuming Fox News or CNN or whatever it is. They don't really care. Like, you're, it's, it's not going to change anything. You need to focus that energy back in on yourself, on exercising and the things we start about in step one so that you can change and you can um, 
become the type of person that can have an impact in the world. Because I don't know about you, but it was really, really hard for me to be my 100% best self when my stomach was in knots and I was feeling really sick and I was malnourished and I was chronically fatigued and I was experiencing depression. It's just not fun. You don't feel good. Even if you're a saint, it's really hard to show up at 100% when you feel like absolute crap. So these things that are dripping on you, if you have a bunch of uh, things in your Instagram feed that make you feel like garbage or you're consuming a bunch of YouTube videos because you need to stay informed, but it's actually just making you feel miserable and sad and like the world is going to crap, just stop watching it. Just stop. Like, Consume stuff that makes you feel good, especially if you're sick for crying out loud. Like you need to get better. <laughs> you don't need to be consuming all this junk. And if you have a bunch of negative people in your life that are just constantly dripping negativity that all they seem to want to do is complain, hang out with them less. You don't need to have a conversation with them most of the time. You don't need to have a confrontation, but just cut down the uh, amount of time you spend with them and look for more uh, upbeat, encouraging, positive people to be around. And while you're doing that, make sure you are one of those upbeat, positive, and encouraging people. Because guess what? Upbeat, positive, encouraging people who are honest and authentic and truthful about their struggles, but not complaining about them, don't want to spend a lot of time around people who spend a lot of time complaining. So if you're one of those people, maybe that's why you don't have a bunch of positive, upbeat, encouraging people in your life. Again, simple. Focus the energy in on yourself. What can I do? What, what is in my control? Crohn's disease can make it feel like things are out of your control. And a lot of times, some of it is. But there are always things that you can control. And one of them is what you consume. You don't need to be informed. You don't need all this stuff. Oh, just drop your excuses. If something makes you feel like crap after you watch it, don't watch it anymore. Number three is the stack method. And this absolutely changed how I built habits and implemented things in and out of my life. And this is based on two things. The first is making the thing you wanna do more attractive and not doing it less attractive. So let's say I wanna go to the gym more, right? What most of us do when we think about going to the gym is we think about how far away it is, how our gym shoes don't really fit, how uncomfortable we'll be at the gym, how we don't really know what to do, and if we're doing the right form and exercises, and uh, it's just, we don't know anyone there, we feel lonely when we're there, it's boring, we have to get all sweaty, we have stacked a bunch of negative things with the idea of going to the gym. So naturally, even though we want to go to the gym, and sometimes willpower pushes us through, there's nothing to carry that process forward. So what you want to do is the opposite of that, effectively, make the gym sound really fun and rewarding. And this is something that builds on itself. Uh, when you first start going to the gym, it's hard, right? You get sore. Uh, you don't really know what's going on. And um, sometimes you can feel uncomfortable because it's a new environment. And that's why I strongly recommend like go to the gym with a friend, hire a trainer so you know what you're doing. Uh, overcome those hurdles as fast as possible because nobody likes doing something they're bad at in an environment they're not comfortable in. Like, of course you don't want to go to the gym. For me, as I've built this up over time, I have associated so much positive feeling and results with going to the gym. I look better. I feel more confident. I have more energy. I think more clearly. Uh, it's, a, it's honestly a reset sometimes in the middle of my day. Like I'll work on shooting videos or I'll work on something for four or five hours and then I'll go to the gym. It resets me, put in some music or go for a workout with a friend. We have great conversation in between sets. It's, it's something that I've learned to look forward to. I get uh, more attention from the opposite sex because of my gym behavior. I have better sleep because I work out. I feel overall better about myself. There's just a ton of stacking of positive to going to the gym. And then on the opposite side, you have the negatives. Well, if I stop exercising, I remember what it was like when I was really, really sick with Crohn's disease. And I'm not saying that 
just stopping exercise would make me feel really, really sick again, but I would trend towards not feeling good. I remember what it was like to look in the mirror and feel kind of ashamed about myself and and not feel good about how I looked in the mirror. I remember what it was like to um, just feel less confident, have less energy, uh, not be as assertive and not feel as good about myself. And I didn't like that. So not going to the gym just sounds unattractive. I'm not saying lie to yourself and tell yourself uh, things that aren't true. Like the gym is obviously hard. When you're in there, it, it it's difficult. It's challenging. It can be painful. Maybe you're sweaty and you don't like being, being sweaty, but you can focus on the things that are the positives. When I go to the gym, I listen to my favorite music or my favorite podcast. When I go to the gym, I go with a friend and it's really fun. When I go to the gym, uh, I like pushing myself to see, how, to see what I can push myself through and see much how much I can tolerate. And when I get through this workout, I'm going to feel so good about myself because it was really hard and I pushed through and I did it anyway. You focus on that stuff instead of the stuff that brings most people down and slows most people down. So you can do this with anything that you want to change. If you want to uh, let go of a negative behavior, you can stack all the negative stuff. When you do that behavior, you can be like, wow, okay, I just did this behavior. Uh, now I don't feel good about myself. I feel bad, uh, like, like drinking. Uh, you wake up the next day, it's like, I feel bad. I'm hungover. Uh, I don't feel good about myself. Maybe I did some stupid things last night, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying never drink, but if you don't want to drink, you can see how you can stack a bunch of negative things around drinking and then the positives would be well you know i don't lose 48 hours because i'm hung over uh, i feel good i don't need alcohol to cope with life i i'm and enjoy being inside myself etc 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 you stack enough of these things on top of each other and instead of using willpower to encourage the behavior you are just naturally pushed in that direction like i can honestly say it's harder for me not to go to the gym on most days than it is to go because there's so much positive connected with going to the gym and there's so much negative connected with not going. Number four, almost everything in your external world is a reflection of your internal one. And I don't want to get too monkish and zen on you, but it really is true and it really is uh, important. And I know when I was really sick with Crohn's, it felt like because I had no energy and because I was really sick all the time and because I was really low, I couldn't change my life. But what ended up happening was because I couldn't externally change things like most people can, you can go out and get a new job, you can you know, ask more girls out, you can do all this different behavior externally. I couldn't do any of that because I was really sick. So I had to turn inward. I had to change what was going on inside. And that is a slow process, but when you do that work, the outside slowly starts to change as well. So if you've never turned the mirror in and you have Crohn's disease or something that's really slowing you down uh, externally, this is the perfect opportunity to turn inward a little bit and see what's going on in there and do some work. Number five, there's four pillars I go back to whenever I feel like I'm getting off kilter, getting a little bit off track, and it's very simple. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, and meditation. Nothing complex, nothing crazy, but I just look at each of those areas and say, okay, am I sleeping enough? Uh, is my routine around bedtime good? Like, am I playing video games right up before I go to bed and that's in affecting my sleep or am I drinking or whatever and that's affecting my sleep or am I actually getting good quality sleep? How's my nutrition? Am I actually eating a healthy diet about 90% of the time or am I eating a healthy diet like 50% of the time and calling it 90% uh, and pizza and nachos and a burger has snuck its way in there uh, more often than I would like. Exercise. Am I actually going to the gym? And I'm, am I actually doing these workouts? Am I actually pushing myself? Am I actually going for it? Or have I kind of backed off a little bit? Meditation. Am I actually meditating 20 minutes a day, one time a day? Uh, am I actually doing that? Or am I just saying that I'm doing that? And by dialing these in, I have been able to course correct like 90% of the time. And then you throw a few sprinkles on top. Maybe I need a new supplement. Maybe I need to add in a little bit of something. Maybe I need to get a massage. Maybe I need to do a little bit more acupuncture or something like that. But that's the icing on the cake. You would be stunned by how few people 
actually sleep seven to eight hours a night, exercise five days a week, eat clean 90% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, and meditate once a day for 20 minutes. The amount of people that do that in America is stunningly low, unbelievably low. Like, just take a poll of your friends. So if that's the case, and these are some of the biggest needle movers of your health, sometimes, again, all we have to do is the simple but difficult stuff. Be honest with ourselves. How many times have we actually gone to the gym? Are we actually walking around? Are we getting enough physical activity? Are we, are we uh, maybe playing a sport or doing a hobby? Or are we just kind of sitting on the couch all day, right? This stuff is hard to do, but it really is the simple stuff. Instead of adding in another supplement, instead of adding in another program or adding in something else, look at the basics first. Do you have the basics dialed? Do you have the basics uh, dialed in to 90% or 100% where you're just, you got it going and you just need a, a little cherry on top, the extra supplement, the extra routine? Or are you trying to add the extra supplement, the extra routine because you don't want to do the actual work? Number six, therapy, coaching, counseling is worth every penny. I have literally spent over $100,000 on courses, counselors, uh, therapists, seminars, um, programs, coaching programs, different things to help develop myself, my inner world, my business, uh, things that I was pursuing, different hobbies and stuff. And it's always been worth it. Some coaches are definitely better than others. Sometimes it takes a while for you to find a good fit. But what I found is as you pursue it, someone kind of shows up and then you work with that person for a while and then maybe you outgrow what they have to teach you a little bit or that you learn what they have to teach you and then you move on to the next coach and you work with something else and you work with a, a different piece of yourself or a different part of yourself or something else you're trying to go after. But it's always been worth it for me to do this stuff. A word of caution, I, for a long time, I did get stuck in this, I'm equating growth and learning. I'm equating learning with growth, when in fact I was just learning and nothing was changing. So you do have to be cautious that you don't just turn into a self-development junkie where you're consuming a bunch of stuff and doing all this therapy and spending all this money, but nothing is actually changing in your life. So be cautious of that. But I would strongly encourage you, especially if you have Crohn's or depression or any of these things where there's a lot of internal stuff going on, sort through that. You can, you can, it's very, very possible. And there are really, really excellent therapists and coaches that can help you help you do that. Some of them are not excellent. So if on your first try, you find someone who's just doesn't really seem to know what they're doing, that's okay. Find someone else. Like it's worth it. Number seven, goal setting is good. But from what I've found, the planning phase is less relevant than everyone makes it out to be. What I mean by that is especially with a chronic illness. My energy levels were up and down. The flares would happen up and down. So I would feel good one moment and then be sick and sick the next. It was very, very hard to be consistent. And what I found worked really well was pointing myself as if I were a ship, pointing myself in one direction, saying, here's where I want to go. So that's where the goal piece comes in. It's like, this is the person I want to be in a year. Okay. We're going in this direction or three years or whatever it is. We're going this way. And then let go a little bit of the planning process. Like I'm going to do X and then I'm going to do Y and then I'm going to do Z and it's going to be in this order and it's super detailed and all laid out. It's important to think through that. Obviously, you need to have some sort of plan uh, in order to get to where you want to go. But the most effective way to do this is set a goal. Let's say you have a goal to lose 50 pounds. Okay, what are the habits that is going to get me to that goal? Well, exercising uh, four to five days a week, um, dialing up my sleep seven, eight hours a night, uh, changing my diet to 80 to 90% fairly clean, healthy whole foods, and doing something to make sure I'm not super stressed out all the time, like meditation or, or prayer or something like that, just to make sure... Um, 
I'm not living in this constant state of fear and tension, maybe getting a therapist, because uh, if you have a bunch of stress in your body, it's definitely harder to lose weight. Okay, so I'm gonna add these habits and focus on these habits to get me to my goal. So if I exercise, if I look back at my week and I exercise five times and I ate fairly clean and I slept most of the time for about eight hours a night and maybe I went to a therapy or coaching session, I'm going to call that a win. I didn't reach my goal of 50 pounds yet, but I did the behaviors that are going to get me there. And if I do this for long enough, then I'm going to get there. And that's where I focus. That's where I focus my energy. Not on this huge detailed plan of like, oh, I got to do all this stuff. It's just a waste of time in the most part. Just focus. Where do I want to go? What are the habits that are going to get me there? And then I am winning if I do these habits. I'm, I'm moving towards my goal and that is a win. Number eight, this ties directly into number seven and that is action wins. I know if you've watched any sort of self-development, YouTube or whatever, they always say this, but truly the regrets, if I have any in my life, are always to do with something I didn't do and never to do with something that I did. Like, for instance, this channel, I wish I would have dove into it with more force uh, and gusto sooner than I did. And I'm proud of myself for creating videos and, and doing it along the way, but it was somewhat inconsistent and somewhat lackadaisical. And I wish I would have went after it uh, with more intensity when I first got the idea. At least I still pursued it. I'm proud of myself for doing that. I'm here today doing it. But if I would have taken more action sooner, that would have been better. It's so easy. This is tied directly into point number one where uh, we like to think make things more complex than they actually are. It's so easy to fall into the trap of, oh, well, I can't go to the gym because I don't have the perfect workout clothes. So I'm going to wait for them to arrive. And then, oh, I don't want to go because I was going to go with Stacy, but she canceled. And so I shouldn't go today. You're just waiting for the perfect conditions to do the behavior that you know you need to be doing. And that complexity will ruin you. Making it too complicated to get into action or that everything has to be perfect or that you have to feel this certain way in order to exercise is not going to help you like one of the things to help me move into action that I did around the gym was I made a promise myself that if I said I was going to go to the gym the next day and I woke up and I was feeling like crap I would still go to the gym but if I did my five minute warm-up where I got on the treadmill did a little warm-up and I was just feeling so crappy that I didn't feel like I could care could carry on I would go home I would allow myself to leave with my head held high so I was giving myself an out but I still ended up at the gym. And what happened most times is I would warm up and I'm like, ah, I feel kind of crappy, but I want to do a little bit of something. You know, I'm already here, right? So I was helping myself get into action, to actually go to the gym, actually do the warm up, and then make the decision. Not make the decision whether I should go to the gym or not when I'm on my uh, third season of Game of Thrones and I want to watch another episode. Like, <laughs> you're not going to go to the gym. Don't make it hard on yourself, right? Take action. Make it easy to take action. Make it easy to do the behavior that you want to do. Number nine, health is everything. There's a quote that says, a healthy man has a thousand wishes, a sick man, only one. And if you've been sick for not just days, but months or years, you know how real this is. If you have a chronic illness or a mental thing like depression or you have a bunch of weight that just won't seem to come off and you've been battling it for months or years, you know that that becomes the sole object of your focus. But instead, what most of us tend to do is we focus on money, for instance, because we want money. So we work ourselves to the bone and we over-caffeinate and cope with alcohol and bad food and we get the money. But then we spend the rest of our lives using the money to try and get our health back. I would suggest that that's pretty dumb. <laughs> yes, money is important. Money is valuable. Money is is great. It's a great tool and there's nothing wrong with pursuing it. But I do not for one second believe that you need to sacrifice your health in order to be financially successful. If you're talking about becoming a billionaire, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not a billionaire. But to get to a point where you're financially free and comfortable and, and feel good about yourself, as long as you have some good work ethic and you're 
constantly focused on growing and um, you're aligned to who you are and you're working on all this stuff and doing the, the other things on this list, you don't have to sacrifice your health to get money. That's that's just ridiculous and absurd. Would someone who is really sick and coping with all sorts of unhealthy stuff like alcohol and and then maybe drugs and eating poorly and all this stuff because they're so stressed out. Is that person going to perform better in their business or in their job than the person who is prioritizing their health first and feels good and has good energy and shows up to work on time and isn't using these coping mechanisms because they're not actually stressed out and they're not working too much? Like who's going to perform better in the long term? Of course, the other guy. But for some reason, uh, we like to think that, oh, it's all about grinding yourself into the ground and working 100 hour weeks and doing all this stuff, it's just not guys, it's it's not, especially if you have a chronic illness. The one thing that I wish I would have done uh, going back in time, I wish I would have just focused as much energy as possible on getting better because I tried to start a business, I tried to do all this financial stuff and help people and do all this kind of thing while I was really sick, just get, a minimum wage job, something super easy. Uh, like I worked front desk at a gym for a while. I paid like 20 bucks an hour or something like that. Should have just kept that job, just chilled out, cooled my heels, worked front desk, read books at the front desk. It was super chill, small town gym. Just done that. Not worried about increasing my financial uh, gains or starting a business or anything like that. And dialed in my health make sure my sleep was good make sure my diet was good all these things we've talked about and then once i've got my health dialed then move into other ventures it's just so hard to build a business or um, expand in another area of your life when you're at you know 30 percent or 20 percent because you feel like crap all the time it's hard anyways to build a business and when you're trying to do it when you're really sick oof it's just a struggle. I would have saved a lot of time if I would have focused on my health. Obviously, been responsible, pay my bills, uh, but find a way of working that's low stress, easier, um, allows me to explore and dive into health. That would have been a much, much better idea. And finally, number 10, you can absolutely completely change who you are. I know that sounds cheesy, but most of us are just not willing to commit to the amount of time it takes to make these changes. There's a Tony Robbins quote that I love, and he says, most of us overestimate what we can accomplish in a year and underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. Looking back to my 25-year-old self, I was chronically sick. I was on medication. Um, I was depressed. I had massive anxiety. I didn't want to travel or get in cars or go on planes because my stomach was just all over the place. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was super unhealthy, on and on and on, right? If you would have told 25-year-old Nate that this is who I was going to be at 35, I would have been stunned. I would have been like, no way. There's, It's not possible. I'm not saying I'm a perfect human being and I have it all together, but the amount of change in 10 years is dramatic. It's insane. And this is what I'm saying when I, when I was talking about goal setting is set your goals and then line up point yourself in that direction, figure out what daily habits, what weekly habits you can do that is going to turn you into this person over here. Focus on those daily and weekly habits and let go of the process. Let go of uh, the bumps and the ups and downs because it's going to be bumpy. It's going to be up and down. But as long as you focus on, okay, this is who I want to be. I want to be a fit and healthy person. I want to be a person who is uh, financially secure whatever that looks like for you. And make sure you write that out. This is what it looks like for me to be financially secure. This is what it looks like for me to be healthy and fit. Because some people have a different definition. Like for me, being healthy and fit looks like being pretty jacked, having a six pack, having a ton of energy. Um, like it's pretty extreme. It's pretty intense, right? Some people being healthy and fit may not be that intense and that's fine for them. So write that out and then figure out what do I need to do to get there? What are the habits that are going to get me there? Focus on those. As long as you're doing your daily habits, you're winning. And then let go. It could take you three years. It could take you five years. But the three and five years is going to go by anyway, guys. It's going to go. It's going to pass anyway. And you could wake up in three years or five years and be like, damn, I'm a totally different person. Or you can wake up and rewatch this video and be like, hmm, I didn't change very much. That kind of sucks. And then you have to start in five years from now. 
So would you rather start right now or start in five years? I encourage you take the leap, whatever that pull is inside you. Like, mm, I feel like I really need to do this. I really need to go to the gym. I really need to start reading more. I really need to take this course or hire a therapist, or I really need to quit this job and change jobs, or I really need to dial into my health. Whatever is that pull in there for you, go after that, follow that and make time, open yourself up to making time to listen to that and lean into that because that's you. That's the that's the true you, whatever you want to call it. Follow that, lean into that, pursue that, and relax and allow time and your habits to work its magic and you will be stunned by the results. Thanks so much for watching this video. I appreciate your time. Uh, if you're stuck in a Crohn's flare right now, I have a full five day course on exactly what I would do to get out of a Crohn's flare. There's a link below in the description. You can check that out. It's totally free. I hope it helps you because I know how much being in a Crohn's flare sucks. It is super not fun. So I made that totally free. Uh, you don't even have to enter your email or anything. It's just right there on my website. I hope that helps and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.